What you read, what you see, what you hear becomes a part of your reality. In other words, what you're exposed to, your brain actually perceives as the world. This means you'll compare yourselves to the people that you see, read, and hear. This means that you'll view the world through the lens of things like social media. All right, what do you do about this? Manage your algorithms. This is extremely important. If you just go through them mindlessly, then they'll win. They'll get your attention. You'll look at things that are scary. You'll compare yourself to people that'll make you feel terrible about yourself. You'll waste your time. Consciously manage your algorithms so that you get information that benefits you, things that help you grow, things that help you become more self-aware, a better person. You have to do this consciously. If you don't, it's like being exposed to a bunch of hyper-processed, palatable food. You're just gonna eat it all. You're not gonna be able to control yourself. This sounds like the advice that you were giving to your niece and nephew just recently. Is totally. This is coming from? Totally, totally. Yeah. It's. Uh, I just read this um, article about the mental health of young women. And young, uh, <laughs> men, young men and boys are going through the same thing, something similar, but young women are really getting hit hard with mental health issues, including um, suicide attempts, like exploding uh, wow. ever since smartphones in, in in particular with women because Younger, that's, that's girls because that's typically uh a like men make up a majority of like suicides it's i forgot what the statistic was on it but it's really high in i think under the under age of 40 well typically statistically women uh will attempt suicides uh but more often but men will actually like do the suicide right so if a man attempts it he's more likely to actually commit suicide there's a really dark joke there but i'm not i'm gonna, no, don't I'm make not it. gonna do it yeah right? don't do it i mean i'm okay. allowed to do that aren't i <laughs> yeah. i feel like i get like a little bit of latitude there <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> but i know you're going to that. Yeah, so. so i was waiting for justin he just didn't have the, he didn't have the balls to do that one right there Ooh, terrible i'm not gonna say you it took all the wind out of it but the the but nonetheless the numbers are just they're just going up 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 and we're seeing these crazy spikes in suicide and then you know other stuff like anxiety and depression which we're seeing across uh, the board and um you know when you look at your algorithms because the, the the social media apps they don't just of course they take into account what you click on they take into account what you thumb up or like or love or what you comment on but they also take into account what you hover over mm. so if you're going through your algorithm yeah. and something catches your eye and you kind of hover over it a little longer it already knows. It knows all this stuff. Yeah. And then it, it, it modifies itself to feed you more of what you want, not necessarily what you need, yeah. right? So again, it's imag imagine being exposed to every food imaginable in front of you and then trying to control yourself constantly. It'd be very difficult. What you would do and what we, how we coach people is we say, don't have those foods in your house. It's one of the best things you could do, right? Because expecting yourself to just control yourself constantly, is it's, it, it's often a losing battle. So with these algorithms, and I've done this, I've changed my algorithms, and sometimes I'll mm. notice that they'll start to veer towards uh, alarmist stuff. This is the stuff that'll get my attention, right? Like right. politics, alarmist stuff, and then I got to consciously move it in a better direction. And I don't click on things; it's because I hover over them. And so uh, it's crazy how easy that just yeah. penetrates its way into whatever you're viewing, and and it's like because it's a bit alarming. You 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 can't help but see like well your my curiosity kind of takes over sometimes and then that will immediately start to repeat and you'll see more videos and more things getting kind of bombarding your your feed uh it, you know and to the point where now like marketing is on a whole nother level we've never seen before oh, yeah. yeah the sophistication is of it is insane is unbelievable it's crazy and so if you're a, if and this is for adults too by the way and i'm speaking as a as a grown man so i can't even imagine if i was a 15 year old kid yeah but what your brain your brain doesn't it doesn't parse it out and say oh this is just social media and then when i'm out in the real world that's the real world and oh this news from across the world that i have no impact over i can't do anything with that is way over there. So I'm not going to consider that as important as like what happened in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. The brain doesn't work that way. The brain looks at, you know, if you're a girl and you're scrolling through and you're seeing all these, for example, perfect bodies, your brain perceives that as that's what you're surrounded by. That's the world. Like everybody mm -hmm. around me looks like that. And so you start to place yourself lower and lower. And you also start to focus more on what you're viewing more of. So now you start to become more self-aware of how you look and how imperfect you are. Right. That's one. That's just one. Uh, thing, but uh, th this is true for all of it. So you have to be very conscious 
of these or turn them off. Right. Like that's the other, that's the you other side. You have to be super intentional because yeah. the minute you just let your, uh, your subconscious sort of viewing just normal patterns, human behavior, like I'm drawn to this because whatever, like it's exciting or it's like alarming or, uh, you know, it's something that like it's, I desire that kind of body or whatever it is. Like it's, you just get pulled into it and it has such like uh, a powerful, um, engine behind it now that, that it really is like, it'll, it'll just plague the rest of your day just because, um, you know, you're, you're using that, that format without that kind of, uh, restriction. Yeah. This, this conversation is so interesting to me because, you know, you, people try and like to counter like kind of the alarmist, uh, you know, like when you get all crazy about this stuff, like, Oh my yeah. God. I mean, Oh, well, you know, when newspapers came out and everybody was on, on their newspaper yeah, and the train, was, yeah. people used to not talk to each other. And we thought that was going to ruin our society. <laughs> and then the radio came and then yeah. the television. And then it's like, so we we always tend to have this thing, but there's something really unique about this with the, like, like to your point of you, if you are on social media and we, we see how much people are on it. Like, I don't, one, I don't know if people were watching enough television uh, to be able to even come close to rivaling. Nor did television adjust itself every second. Right. Yes. Nor did you have unlimited bandwidth and right. access to anything and, and everything. And it was pre-planned and scheduled, so it was like and nor yeah, do, 10 channels. And yeah. nor do I think that a lot of people perceived the you know celebrities on TV as their world or their reality, where in social media you start to perceive that as your world and your reality. These are my friends. These are the people I follow. They follow me. This is kind of my reality, even though it's a fake reality that, so the, 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 the training of the brain or conditioning of the brain to believe this is a reality is far more dangerous and, and interesting to me than, than what we've ever seen in the past. Cause none of those other mediums, did it like this no they didn't even come close it's like the processed food revolution right processed food really didn't it wasn't an issue until they got so smart with it and so available that uh we just don't have the skills to navigate it right like they, they've done studies on this um you're exposed to these foods if you eat them they make you overeat. It's almost like the best strategy is to avoid them not to eat them and go everything in moderation mm -hmm. well it's, that doesn't work for most people, you need to have some self-awareness and be like, actually, yeah. I think I should probably just completely avoid this. I mean, the stat that I'm looking at, by the way, is a great article we'll post in the show notes that counters all of the counters to this kind of conversation. So, but here's a stat that I saw that was just... Right, because you have like the thank you for smoking people that will like uh, tell you, well, you can adjust your own. We algorithms. had him on the show. Yeah, we had one Which of those frustrating conversation. Well, yeah, one of the most prevalent guys in the yeah. space that has been arguing for it was his near 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 IL or near yeah near, NIR. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. NIR A Y A L. Yeah, and he did. Like it, I mean, he did a phenomenal job. Of m making me kind of go like putting the blame and and you know back on the individual right is, of know. course but look here's look, here's here's a, here's a, it's uh, easy to make that argument here's a statistic from 2007 to 2008 the increase in U S hospitalizations for intentional self harm so they actually went to the hospital because they hurt themselves for girls ages 10 to 14 you know how much it went up hmm. from 2007 to eight just one year five, no from 2007 to eight to now. Oh, okay. oh, so now, okay. okay. You sound like you were saying 2000. 518%. Oh. 518%. Okay, what happened right around that time, right? The 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 mass iPhone. use of, yeah, the of these smartphones. Yeah. And this this article, it, it overcomes a lot of the, you know, the, the uh, like they'll say, oh, well, the rise in self-harm rates is an artifact of reduced stigma. Mm. This article completely goes through and, and, and breaks that down. The rise in self-harm rates is mostly a result of changes in reporting. No, this article breaks that down. And that there is no rise in international uh, teen girls' suicide rate. Not true. So <clears throat> what we're seeing is just, this is a this is unprecedented. But I know as an adult myself how I feel when I intentionally turn it off oh, yeah. versus when I go on it. And I'm way more self-aware than I would say the typical teenage kid who just doesn't have, they're not, developmentally not, of the, they, they don't, they don't have those boundaries that's established. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. There's also yeah. this interesting predicament that we're in also that it happens to be, which is different than TV and radio and all these other things that we use purely for entertainment. There's this, you know, dual use of it being used for a business. So there's this easy justification process of, 
well, I, I need it to scale my business or I, I one day want to build a business. Right. And so I need yeah. to build a brand. And, and so that's really challenging. And, and it's already a, a tempting thing uh, to use or get addicted to. Then you add in the fact of, well, I mean, either one, you already have a business or you have a dream to build a business yeah. and you, and everybody's <clears throat> made the case for how powerful and useful it is for building a business. So it's a, it's a really interesting thing that we're, we're going through right now. And the, the part that I'm most concerned about is that the stats that you're talking about, you know, how much, how much more worse does it have to get before we can? Cause I, I believe in, I right. do believe in us as humans, as a species. I think that we are pretty smart and like we, I know we do some dumb things, mm -hmm. but we tend to learn from when, when, when millions of people do dumb things, we go, <sighs> Hey, that's not a good idea. But we tend to wait until we see enough of the lemmings fall off the cliff to go like, Oh, we yeah. probably need to, or it gets repackaged I'll, and we have to relearn it. Yeah. I know? wonder, I wonder if like, because of what they're doing in Florida, if we'll finally get like maybe some statistics in the opposition, how much it helped or not. Right. Like it, it, it seeing healthy uh, individuals and kids. hundred percent. I mean, I think that's it. how it begins, Justin. I think that one state or one leader or one person, one outlier puts their foot down first and says, Hey, we're not going to do it this way, or we're going to do it a different way because of these reasons. And then you see the potential pit them against each other, right? Then you see the positive contrast, things that yeah. happen from that. And then other people will follow suit. I think after well, that. Interesting. You say that, right? Cause there's another article that I just read that the title of it, this is from the New Yorker said that the dumb phone boom is real. And apparently yes. there's, this is a, <laughs> yeah, a, a, a burgeoning cottage industry. It's still small. Uh, that caters to uh, beleaguered smartphone users desperate to escape their screens. So it's like a lot of people in their 20s who are purposefully buying dumb phones. <clears throat> They're purposely buying phones that are not smartphones. That oh, yeah. No, so I've brought that up now. before. As are the kids. It's becoming a popular thing for kids yeah. to get flip phones and stuff now. Now, we had recently our, our friend John Deloney in here, and he said something I thought was interesting. I was curious if you guys practice something similar I, I definitely, after hearing him going, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna implement that as as Max gets older, where when kids come over to his house, his wife has a basket and it's like they take the phone, all your phones. Go, I thought of that. Yeah, that's and, really good. I think that's such a cool, like, just and that just becomes a standard at your house. Everybody knows when you come over to the Schaefer house, mm -hmm. you don't have, you're not, you're not on your phone at all. And so, and if you need to use it to call your mom, yeah, pick you up, back it's the still basket. there, yeah, yeah, whatever. But there's a central place that that's this where I like that. I love that. I do. And I love that being just like a, like it's the standard at your house. And <laughs> dude, speaking of John and algorithms, he's yeah. he's in my algorithm all the time now because uh, I've been watching some of his clips. Yeah. Bro, how You're often giving you guys, him so many hearts? How, yeah, yeah, how many times you guys uh, have you listened to a show? Because I, I listen to a lot of his clips, quite a few. Yeah, he has a lot of really good sound bites of like where he's. Oh my god, the questions he gets uh, are insane. Bro. Insane. Like, should They're I have my dude. husband? Yes. Or is this a red flag? Or it's these are like oh my gosh they're asking crazy questions and he's always so good and so calm yeah. when he answers them he's probably which ex explains why he's exploded and now like yeah. on t on the top like I think he's ranked in the top five on the podcast ranking all the Dude, time for now. personal growth and like becoming a better person and just navigating navigating difficult topics like his show is. He's yeah, the most one of the best. Well, because he used to be like a crisis. Yes, like, he was there to, to take calls for people that were like suicidal. Yep. Right. So yep. it's like you know, you, and you get that on his show, but like from all different <clears throat> angles of like yep. yeah, people struggling with like really crazy stuff. I, I would say he's the most consistent person that my fam that I've turned all my family members onto that yeah. they listen to. So I always like all they'll, they'll send me sometimes the clips, and I'm like, oh, you guys are all oh yeah, no, ever since. You guys had him on the show. I've been following all his content. I'd say most of my family members follow him consistently out of everybody we've probably introduced to them. So he's he does, he does a really good job. And like I said, he stays, he stays so calm. Like I'll hear, I'll see, I'll hear the person ask the question. I'm like, I would freeze, dude. How do you answer that? <laughs> like, you know, I also, yeah, obviously he's an expert, right? It's heavy. Yeah. Exactly. I also love too. So and I think why we all hit it off as friends uh, that we all share this, uh, you know, extremely uh, authentic his radical honesty. Like he does not uh, speak to his guest or people as like, he's on this pedestal of like this, uh, you know, doctor who's telling no. you how to do everything. He's, he shares all of his challenges and struggles and admittedly talks about his insecurities. Yeah. And I think that's just, I think that there's not mm -hmm. a lot of men in his position, right. Not only from uh, like how much like fame and attention he has, his degrees, like, 
that are willing to be like, man, I'm a big fuck up myself trying to figure this out. Like you can I, tell he's worked with real people for a while. Right. Yeah. Cause that's how you connect. He's yeah. not talking at people. Yeah, no. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Today's giveaway on YouTube is maps performance to enter to win. Leave a comment below this video on the first 24 hours that we drop it, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Uh, you'll know in the comment section if you won. Also, uh, this month's sale, Maps Anywhere and Maps Hit, both 50% off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Yeah. Speaking of challenges and struggles, uh, I got snipped. <laughs> How was it? Was it? Was it? Where's your little donut pillow? Dude? I'm That's, good, bro. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. 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 I noticed your voice is a little different, though. That's not. It got uh, lower. Yeah. No, it didn't get deeper. It didn't, <laughs> they had to use, they yeah, had to use special tools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, this is not working. Can yeah. you get the diamond like, tip? How's your weekend? No, yeah. so no, so I, I, I uh, we can't I, find it. I'll tell you about it because uh, you'll probably do it at some point. Right? I know. I can't. Yeah. Are you gonna do it? Yes. It's I actually am. not a big deal, dude. First off, I complained to my wife and she quickly put me in my place because women do this shit all the time. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Okay, ladies. And but their procedure is a lot more invasive. Yes, so, but yeah. guys don't do this. Yeah. So she, you know, after I'm done, she's, she's, you know, she called me. She's like, so how was it? It's still our balls. Though, yeah. Dude. And I'm like, it was awkward. She's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you go in there and, you know, you go in and there's a nurse there. So it's this, you know, it's this woman and, you know, she's got a mask on. I can't even see what she looks like. And she's like, okay, so, um, take everything off, put this apron thing on, lay back on the, on the, you know, the bed. And then I'm going to come in, I'm going to check things out or whatever. So I'm like, okay. So, <laughs> yeah. I, go, so I do all dig that in there. Yeah. and I lay, you know, and I'm, I'm sitting on the thing with my feet out here like this, whatever. <laughs> and she goes in and she's like, okay, I'm going to wash it. I'm going to wash you. And I'm going to put this antibacterial. <laughs> what are you going to wash? Like, bro, hey, listen, wow. listen, it's That's the most exciting. awkward thing ever. To have a random person manipulate your your penis and you know wipe things and wash things and then and then she's like, did you shave the before? She's like, did you shave the area? I'm like, I did the best job I could. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't, I, don't, I haven't put a razor to my balls. It's been, been a long time. Landing strips. I tripped down there. Yeah, no, oh, no, 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 no. Trimming is one thing. They want you to shave. Like you got to get it. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. No, so no she, little landing strip. No, 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 no. no. So gross. Yeah. So she goes, oh, little, little she goes, oh, she goes, oh, she's like, there's some areas that I want to kind of, you know, really get close or whatever. So then she gets a razor, bro. And she's like, you know, shaving Ooh. me. I'm like, oh my Ooh. God, bro. I'm sitting oh. there. It's the most awkward. I'd be more like scared about that. Like yeah, dude, nicking me. Yeah. It's the most awkward thing ever. Yeah. Like, that might be, that might be more awkward than my, all my, my sperm bank thing that I had to do. That's, uh, that's well, I got to do that too. And you got to do that? I do. Wow. So she does that, That's right? enough for me not wow, to do Wow, well, I'm going to so, do some good grooming before so, I go. So she that. does that. And then and then the doctor comes in, and then he's just having conversation with me the whole time. Hey, what do you do? And I'm like, oh, I got a podcast. Oh, cool. Listen to it. Why are they doing your balls and everything? Yeah, it was. So they inject so you weird. with this. Yeah. They inject yeah. you with a local anesthesia. And what you feel is like a... Like You're right handed? Uh, like, <laughs> 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 How do you know? Really? Yeah. You feel like a poke, and then it kind of feels like, you're, like your balls hurt a little bit. Like you just got... You know how you get like hit and the ball's real light? You know how your friend comes by and goes, oh, like, like a delay, like, oh, delayed yes. reaction? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're like, oh, a little bit. But then they're numb. You don't feel a damn thing. And then they go in, they cut, I, I, and they put a drape, right? So you can't see anything. And I can, obviously, because I'm sure if you see someone cut your shit. You oh, know, God, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they go in, they cut, you know, and you don't Yikes. feel nothing. You just feel like a little pull in or whatever. And then they use a, um, they cauterize the end of them. So she, the, the nurse stuck this big, uh, like thing on my leg. I'm like, why are you sticking that big thing on my leg? She's like, that's a that's to ground the cauterize the the, the cautery <laughs> machine, just so that you don't get shocked or whatever. I'm like, oh, you guys are gonna electrocute my. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then they go, and wow. it's, it takes like 30 minutes, bro. It's done. Then you put a big ass piece of gauze, pull your shit up, you go home, and it wasn't that big of a deal. I, you know, they told me doctor's gonna get mad now because he's like, I'm gonna listen. He's like, don't pick anything up over 10 pounds. I'm like, really? 10 pounds like like <laughs> i'd be walking out there with a cane dude like yeah. oh no really I, it wasn't that i would, big of I would a deal. milk it too right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it honey, wasn't that uh, it wasn't that big of a deal oh, I, like, you know, I was supposed <laughs> to wait before you know Need some ice cream he's like you got to wait a week before you ejaculate and i'm like it's been like five days before this well so so now you gotta, okay fucking. so you gotta wait a week to do After. that and then in addition to that you how many times did i hear you say you had to get 30 or no 40? no no 15 to 20 so oh i thought it was way more than that me too Still uh, fifteen or twenty. Yeah. So he's That's like, like four, bro, fifteen to twenty and forty was like a big. I difference. said thirty. I thought it was 30. yeah. He so he said you got to like, wait to ejaculate, which I didn't. I waited. It was a day or two, and I couldn't handle it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jessica and I. Had, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm good though. I'm a little sore, but I think I'm alright. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I'm alright. Yeah. At BPC, bro. BPC one five seven. I'm healing way yeah, faster. Yeah, yeah, the Wolverine. Uh, the average person. Side, yeah. Uh, so you got to wait a week to do that, and then you need fifteen to twenty 
or 14 to 20 ejaculations before or two months, one or the other, before you're probably safe. But you still have to go in and they test your semen to see if you have sperm. Oh, wow. Just to be just to be sure. Yeah. So now the, the funny, the girl gives the, the nurse gives me the cup, you know, and she's yeah. like, there's two ways to do this. So set up your appointment. She goes, either you do it at home. Yeah. And you'd yeah. be there in 30 minutes. And you have to be there with it. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. bro, imagine me at Morgan Hill. I, I had to, yeah, yeah. bro, Morgan Hill. I had imagine to do, traffic. You're like, oh, bro, all the way to San Jose. You know what I'm saying? I got uh, Katrina holding it under her boob to keep it all warm and stuff like that. I'm, <laughs> bro, I'm trying to get there. Try. <laughs> or you yeah, pulled over by a cop. I, <laughs> after I did it there, I was somewhere. like, oh, we'll figure this out from home, dude. It's too awkward over there. It's fucking way awkward. You dude. told me it was just a regular office? No, I mean, it's no, it's a, a jerk off room. That's what oh, it is. Wow. So it's worse. It's worse than a regular office. Yeah. I feel like a regular office, I could, I don't know, drum up some fantasy or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. But like in there, all I could think is like, who's the dude that was right here before oh, me? I'm saying, so what did he watch? And what is like, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. it's just, and, and, and like all the girls are yeah. waiting out there and it's like, everyone knows what you're yeah. doing. Like that is Aren't just self-conscious because the cup's clear. Some candles. Well, then, yeah, the then you also, yeah. like, also got to aim it in a little cup. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, that's not like something I practice. This? And she told me, is this true? Saying, I mean, she, seriously, you guys ever practice that? I don't practice that. It's unpredictable. Yeah, I, I got yeah, good. Where's it going? Did, yeah. she, did, she, did she ask, uh, so it's, it's a, did she tell you this, that don't open the cup until right before? Yeah, yeah. What, how, what the, I know. how? They have all these weird rules. Yeah, exactly. Does, does that make sense? So oh, you have a so cup, so keep what, it sealed. They don't sealed. want to contaminate because- Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, so, no, so you got to like keep the- air so contaminants? Gotta, I guess. So yeah. now imagine yeah. you're trying to get ready. You're going, oh, here we go. Then you go, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, it's it it could be like more awkward. <laughs> no, it's not like full of that, yeah, bro. No, not it's at all. not. It's so awkward. It's funny too because I called my I called my daughter, my fourteen year old daughter, and just have a conversation with her, mm -hmm. and I, and I was like, oh, she's like, how's your day? And I'm like, oh, oh, I got my vasectomy today. She's like, oh, what? She's like, do they like what do they do? So I'm like, oh, she doesn't know. So I'm like, they cut my my testicles off. <laughs> what? <laughs> they cut them off? <laughs> no. I'm like, yeah. I'm but like, I saved him, honey. I did. Yeah, I said yeah. that. I said they let me save him. <laughs> Then she knew I was before. Yeah, just like yeah, the dog. Just, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> make Christmas decorations. I'm like, honey, type in vasectomy uh -huh. and, and type on uh, yeah. images so you can see what happened. I made a oh. necklace out of mine, didn't yeah, you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, gross. gross. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a pearl necklace. <laughs> All right. Oh, that went two ways. Oh, I didn't even mean we that. We went far with this. Uh, you got to stop him yeah. when he gets close, guys. I know. Yeah. This yeah. conversation yeah. is going down. You got to stop Anyway, so... So I got some time before uh, before we're 100 percent you know safe or whatever. But I mean, uh, all in all, did you lift today? Or are you already back to lifting? The doctor wow. said not to lift for a week. Yeah, I know what he said, but I asked why him, did why, you? Why? Because I know you fucking probably. <laughs> could. Listen, <laughs> we did the last conversation we had. Just want a minute because you're working through these. Listen, yeah. This guy. So far, we were just talking about this like last week, like working through this. Like, yeah, I'm trying yeah. to, you know. Actually, I did something else. I was pretty good about that. What did you do? Yeah, so first off, okay, two things. First <laughs> off, with experienced lifting. Can you disengage part of your body while you train one part of your body really well? Yeah. Yeah, it's bodybuilding skill. Yeah, yeah. All right then, bro. Yeah. So uh, I, that's what I did today. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like this, like, like just relax. I just, real, I just, <laughs> just got to pump, dude. I just got to pump. I'm good. Everything's good down there. No legs. I'm going to do squats oh. or anything like that. No, here's what I did. So I made this new, I, 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 I'm going to say it on the show now because I think I'm going to do it. One of the things that I've communicated to listeners about like, you know, creating a better relationship with exercise is to not weigh yourself and to not like view and study yourself in the mirror, right? Now, I don't weigh myself all the time, so that's not an issue. However, one thing I do when I work out is I always end up in my my undershirt, my wife beater. Yeah. Um, and so now I'm going to work out and I'm going to wear, I'm just going to keep a t-shirt on or a long sleeve shirt and I'm not going to. Bro, do I, No more thunder vest. Hey, no. no it's going to be underneath. Because I like the uh, hug yeah, you like from the, the shirt. I was you say, should yeah. do the do the sweater move. That uh, that's why I'm not there yet. Oh, T-shirt, yeah. and then I'm thinking about that because that was that was like a lot of the the motivation. Like it was funny because even um, although it's a different yeah. mind game I was playing, but it really was to to take myself out of, because yeah. I was messing with my own head of like, yeah. hey, I know what the plan is, but I see this, and then so I yeah. would just cover all up and yeah. And so a, today I just worked out in a T-shirt and, and, and I didn't get down to the. The white now, Peter. did you did you? Well, it doesn't count because like you have issues going on. I was gonna say, did it feel like a different workout? But you're already doing like a different workout because of yeah. yeah. Um, so I noticed it, that I was I was less like looking at myself and studying how I looked and all that stuff. So it took some of that away. But I'm gonna slowly move. Yeah, to it'd be interesting if you feel like you get your less of a workout yeah. because of it too, because you kind of because you're not getting all pumped up. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I had a decent workout, but it was less well hard to gauge right now because of your yeah yeah. So yeah. wait wait till you're like in your you know hitting all your the way in. Yeah, yeah, I've been 
I've been looking forward to talking to you guys too, just, and I've, I've saved it for the podcast so we could literally just kind of have this open conversation and people could hear, uh, I don't know, us like talk it out and figure it out because, um, you know, I'm like really challenged uh, right now with the trisepatide and the part that is most challenging. <clears throat> and I feel like even though I know- this, the low calories? Yeah, I know this cold is lingering because I know you're still, it's still, it's like- This I've, is the longest, most pain in the ass cold of all time. It Pretty is. Pretty much everybody I know. Yeah, just yeah. sniveling and coughing. Right and now. I'm bare, I wouldn't even say I'm 100%, I'm like 95 yeah. right now. Like it's just I'm, sticking around. Yeah, just still like in the morning, <clears throat> you don't feel this when I feel a little congested like at night. Like that family member at the end of a party. We're like, all right, we'll just, yeah, we're going to put the kids to bed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool, just, I'll be just over hanging out still. Like, still uh, like, go home. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> So, so again, take it with a grain of salt because I still, I haven't teased that out yet. And I yeah. really won't, before I give like my final, like, oh, this, I feel really strongly about this for these reasons. I want to have a couple weeks like that. Um, you, you saw me today, which I don't think you ever see me doing any sort of training or exercises before we podcast. I was just doing a couple real, real small lifts or whatever. But I found that that's the only way right now that I can get in any sort of lifting. I have like... I have such low energy that a traditional workout right now destroys me. Oh, Destro calories I, are too low, and not just destroy me like 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 I'm not talking about my muscle fatigue. Like my it zaps my yeah, energy yeah, yeah. to where I am just after that. Then I want to nap. I don't want to oh, do anything all day. I almost sucks. feel I, I almost feel feeling. like yeah. I went back to getting sick. I was just like, oh my god. And so I have trained very little, very very little in this whole process. Wow. And so the only thing that seems and so the thing I wanted to talk to you guys about it. One, I wanted to ask you nutritionally and again I, I told you i'm really trying to take the 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 trainer brain out of it is like trying to hit my protein but I, what i was thinking i was like man part of why i might be feeling so bad too is i'm just my uh micro nutrients i might be yeah. lacking so yeah. what vitamins you know I, I i i'm not getting i know i'm not getting enough red meat or protein in general so probably i'm b vitamins i don't know maybe even iron definitely I already creatine. Taken magnesium mm -hmm. definitely creatine i would go multivitamin yeah creatine and multivitamin and then you already take vitamin d yeah and then just continue that okay okay yeah. so that's i don't take a multivitamin regularly so i think i'm gonna try and get, yeah because people don't understand that right when you cut your calories you also cut so that's the macronutrients go down right proteins right. fats carbs go down but so do your micronutrients so oftentimes when you're in a calorie deficit, it's probably a good idea to supplement yeah. with vitamins. So that was, so, I mean, I'm already starting <clears throat> to formulate like this, which is crazy that I feel like we haven't got a lot of convers a lot of questions about this. It's blowing my mind that more people haven't reached out saying like, oh, how should I train? How should I eat? Because this is so... Everybody's it, so just uh, enamored by the weight loss I know. aspect. And it's like, yeah, they're not planning ahead like how are we going to work our way out so here's what here's what the 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 GLP ones do and here's what they don't do what they do is they make you eat less what they don't do is give you a better diet necessarily they just make you eat less so you still have to be intentional with your diet otherwise you'll suffer from some So I would I would argue that Sal and it's and here's the other thing I was going to tell you guys about that I keep finding that's really interesting and it's kind of a sad part food is so uninteresting to me yeah I mean I'll, I'll have a day where I haven't eaten all day long, and I might have even tried yeah. to get a little bit of exercise, move, and, and like I'm, I'm actually feeling a little hungry. Like that's because I don't, <laughs> I don't ever, I don't even know what that what I used to call starving or oh I gotta eat feeling feels like anymore. That doesn't even exist. But I get to, there is times when I have long periods, low calorie, and I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm hungry. I need to eat. Yeah. And then I go to eat, and maybe the first bite or two is really enjoyable. The rest of the meal is lame. Like fucking lame. Would hyper palatable or more palatable foods help? No, huh. it, they're less desirable, which is weird. That's weird. So if that I got this, really if weird. I got this option, like so far, what I have found is nothing. I wonder if that's true for everybody. That's really weird. I, I haven't heard that from anybody because I've heard other people say like, "Oh, it hasn't helped my husband at all. He still eats this and does that." I'm like, that's weird because for me. I got no desire for shit food. None. See, but now you didn't have an issue with appetite, yeah. right? Or, or you had some cravings issues, but you had, your issue was more like you force fed yourself for years yeah. and years and years. That's what I'm so like, uh, I wonder. curious about like somebody who literally has had no barriers, restrictions, any kind of like healthy behaviors that they've been able to check themselves on. Whereas like, so, so somebody that like leans fully into like the indulgence and then goes on true's appetite if that has the same kind of effect of like those types of foods yeah or if it's so my that, experience that goes back to like better yeah. behavior so people i know who went on it just eat less they just they just kind of eat less okay and it does help with the hyper palatable stuff because that typically follows what they would consider a normal meal so 
what you'll see a lot of people do is they'll eat their normal meal and they'll be like, oh, I want to have dessert. And then it takes that away. So they probably do cut out some of the bad food, more of the bad food as well. I mean, I, I've tried to mess with the, the hyper palatable foods. Like I've tr intentionally like went and had ice cream. I've intentionally like, and it is like, it don't even taste good, dude. It's, it's so not hyper palatable. I can't wait for you to go off of it. Just see what that feels like. Well, I already know because I can, the only, the oh, only times right. I've been able to even try it is on day. Uh, when it fades out. Yeah. On the yeah. last day, oh, Saturday right. or Sunday, because I had to take my shots on Monday. Right. So yeah. Saturday, Sunday, it's like, Hmm. Okay. I could Weird. go for, I can go for a little bit of ice cream. Let me go try it. I take a bite or two of it. Weird. Pff, it's not even enjoyable, dude. I could be so, I could be so calorie deprived and, and then, and then allow myself, I'm going to go try some ice cream. No desire to crush it. Do you it. think you're going to stay on no. this or do you think at some point you're like, Fuck oh, no. I feel like shit. Yeah. Fuck no, yeah. no, no, no way. Like, I mean, I'm only, I'm only doing it and riding it out for the experiment of it. I mean, I, so I, how long do you, have you, have you I want to, I, I want to try and go through the full three bottles, which is my, which is like how a full cycle. I think it's like a three month cycle. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think that's what they, like, I'll look at the, which by the way, I was supposed to go up in the dosage, which I am not doing that. Like I can't imagine getting a stronger. So you're dose. staying on the same dose. You yeah, started. you're supposed to dub by week yeah. five. You're supposed to double the yeah. dose, and I ain't doing that. Like yeah. that's all, I'm already like that. I can't imagine what that would do to my appetite. It also like if huh. I if I eat something that is not like super clean, it like almost upsets my stomach. It's hmm. fucking weird. Weird. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> it's weird. And the part that I I'm really not liking is the uh, it's and you one of you asked me I think it was you Justin who asked me about like my my motivation. I'm high. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm highly motivated to get work done, clean the house, do things like that. Depending on my energy levels being okay, so it, it, as long as my energy levels are are good, and the, you know what sucks is the only thing that's destroying my energy levels is my workouts. So right. I have I'm eating just enough calories to like have a good day, productive, doing my work. But if I go attempt to get a little bit of a workout in. It zaps me so much. So I, I mean, this, I don't want to do week shit. Three, right, or week four? No, I'm on I'm week five. Oh, week five. Okay, yeah, yeah. so okay, so in the beginning, like the first two weeks or whatever, let's say the energy levels were still not quite as effective. They, and yeah, it, and I think that was just leaning out, losing body fat, and getting healthier. Right now, you're right. five weeks from low calories. So now, like, yeah, further in, it how seems how many calories? I know you're not tracking, but how many calories would you estimate you're averaging if you were to average them all out? Under fifteen hundred. Holy shit! Yeah, really? Under, yeah, under fifteen hundred. Um, really crazy. You load. didn't even go down that low ever. Weeks before a contest, two, the lowest I ever allowed myself to get for a show was two thousand. So wow. it's, it's significantly lower than I've ever been. Wow. Huh. Um, and, it, and by the, it's because I can't. I can't eat anymore. Like, even when I think, like I said, I, I'll, I'll let these these long periods happen, and not even intentionally. Just I'm not hungry, so I don't eat. And then I realize, like, oh shit, I haven't eaten all day. I need to eat something. And then like the other night, Katrina yeah. made tacos. Tacos are like one of my favorite things that she makes at home. It's like one of my favorite, yeah. you know, like r enjoyable. I crush eight to ten of her homemade tacos. Dude, it was a struggle to eat four. I've never ate only four of her tacos. And it was like a str like the first two were enjoyable. It's like, I haven't eaten all day. These are hyper palatable and good. And then, and then I'm just like, I could be done right now at two, wow. but I'm like, I need to finish these four at least because I'm so low. Wow. And so that's what it's like for me. It's I like, can see this being hmm. very helpful for people that have really, really hard yeah, issues. Their cravings are cravings. just like, yeah, intense. But so, otherwise, you're going to really need good coaching and be very intentional with your diet. Otherwise, you're going to go in a bad direction. Right? I have three family members right now. All of them are, are are significantly overweight and all of them are like chomping at the bit for me to let yeah. them have it. And I'm telling them no. And I'm telling them no until I get through this process. And the reason why I'm no on them is because I've already helped them out before their diet. And the, the thing that I, they all, they're, they don't eat. They already like They got eat. the hammered metabolism. They already have a hammered metabolism. So I'm, I can't imagine hammering it more like- Yeah. That's going to be, they're going to eat nothing. And then even if they see the, and here's the other thing that's happening too- mm -hmm is you know the initial like so i'm I, i'm down to 215 right so i i weigh 231 when i started this i'm 215 right now but i'm holding at 215 and it's not like i'm just your metabolism is adjusting yep and so it's like imagine if you're somebody who was already a low calorie eater you drop sure you drop down to 500 calories a day of course you're gonna lose weight for the first well, yeah what about like a lot of people don't realize that sedentary obese people don't have a lot of muscle to begin with yeah yeah so it's not like they have all this muscle mass they have low muscle and high body fat yeah and so the body anytime you just cut calories without strength training without keeping protein intake high you're gonna lose muscle your yeah. body pairs it down 
I also think that I have a massive advantage that I'm on synthetic testosterone because I don't think I would be holding on as much muscle as I'm holding Your on to. Your testosterone would have tanked by now. At 1,500 calories a day. Yes. A man like you, yeah. no strength training because yeah. you don't have the energy. Yeah. Testosterone would have plummeted. Yeah. The only thing that keeps me motivated is luckily for all these years, you know, I've built enough muscle in my body that I'm just leaning out, you know? Yeah. So it's like, oh, this is great. I'm not working out and all that. And like my body is looking better and better and better. My waist is just yeah. coming in. Body fat's dropping off. Hanging. I'm actually keeping muscle better than I ever. But again, I'm on, I'm on testosterone and I'm taking peptides to help me with growth hormone. And I'm doing all these things that like yeah. were promote sustaining muscle had i not been taking that like i'd probably be a lot lighter but just losing muscle yeah. a lot faster wow. too. So. i'm glad you're doing this this yeah. will help us communicate yeah, it like yeah, like, like uh, you know honestly it's you know well, especially it's shifting already you can see the longer you're on it like all these new challenges and like yeah because before it was like your drive and everything was good but like to the point of not having the energy now yeah. that's going to be impeding on that I it's would. it's really motivated me to try and put together a like a food supplement and workout protocol yeah. for people that decide to do this because um and what i'm finding like really nothing like that out there what works it's really crazy. good right now is just like i have this like for the day i'll say like you know i'd like to get you know some you know bench press in i'd like to get some rows in i'd like to get yeah. some curls shoulder like i'll have like a exercise and then i'll be like i'll literally just go do two or three sets and then that's it. You're done. And then go wow. about my day and then come back. If I try and put them together and put a half hour, wow. hour workout together, oh, hmm. I'm fucking done. Yeah. And not only am I weak through the workout, but even just going through a weak workout like that, I'm just, the rest of the day, I'm like spent and I almost feel you sick. You know what's challenging about that too? I saw, so I experienced this yesterday. So, you know, we, we get uh, a majority of my butcher box order is, is tri-tip and the tri-tip uh, that's grass fed is leaner than the traditional mm -hmm. tri tip you get at the grocery store. All, all grass fed meat is is typically leaner, and so I ate a bunch of this. And you know when you eat protein, and we we communicate this. This is backed by studies and data, quite clearly. Protein is very satiating of all the macronutrients. Like if you eat a, a lot of protein, this is why we tell people hit your protein targets, your calories will drop. Like I experienced that again yesterday. It's like I'm I'm eating this certain amount of, a certain amount of protein, and I know I have rice here that I'm eating afterwards. But once I ate my 50 grams of protein, I'm like, oh man, my appetite. Yeah. So someone like, you know, you're on this this GLP-1 agonist, already kills your appetite. You're like, I got to hit protein so I don't lose muscle. Protein sati satiating yeah. on top of it. Two, two factors. That right might be impossible. Bro, it's, it feels impossible. So like so much. Because you'd have to eat over 200 grams uh, of protein. Another today. hack that I've like found for me, um, I, I tend to like, so the, my favorite dish so far has been like, um, chicken and rice. And it's because, uh, the chicken's lean enough that I can eat a good enough portion. If I have like a fatty steak or something like steak, you're done. I, it's hard. It's heavy in there. Yes. Yeah. Cause the, the high protein and the fat in Both there, satiating. it's so satiating wow. that it's so hard to finish like an eight ounce steak, but I can actually get through eight ounces of chicken. So chicken and rice seem to be like the like, okay, I can get a full meal wow. in of this. So that, that's okay. So that tends to be like what I gravitate towards. But then I know the benefits of red meat for me nutritionally, which is why I was bringing up the, the micronutrients. Yeah. It's like, hey, what should I be probably supplementing with? Because I'm not getting my usual red meat I would intake. supplement with creatine for sure. Because your yeah. creatine intake went down because you're eating less meat, Yeah. period. Yeah. End of story. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, crazy. Anyway, I, I got some some kind of frustrating statistics uh, from our great state of California. Uh -huh. So do you guys know, you guys know this, right? I, I mean, you guys, Already you guys have lived your whole lives yeah. just from observation, right? The homelessness in California, just, it just exploded over the last definitely 10 years, but especially the last five years. Okay. There's a um, great video of Gavin Newsom trying to like make that his like pr a priority right. number one. And then you see over the years how he just keeps how saying, effective he was. yeah, <laughs> it's gotten a million times worse. Well, Go it's, ahead. it's so bad. I, I don't remember this growing up, but now it's so bad. You see homeless encampments uh, all over the place. Um, it's wild in, in LA alone. Do you guys know that in LA, you know how big their population of homeless people are in LA? Just homeless people. 71,000 people. Wow. There are seven in just LA. It's, its own city. Its own city. One, I believe one fifth of all the homeless people in America live in California because California's got the worst uh, issue. It's over 55 homeless people per 10,000 uh, people as a stat. But anyway, so you hear that and you're like, wow, what are they doing? What's going on? 
what happened? I read this article. You ready for this? Mm. So California spent over the last five years $24 billion, $24 billion on trying to solve this problem. They did an audit on Where this. Where did it go? Do you know what they found on the audit? It's missing. They did not track the outcomes. They did not track if it worked or didn't work. They just spent. Pretty sure California has the same CPA as the Pentagon. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. Uh, <laughs> Real good. Did you see that came up again I too, do, right? Uh, oh, and the, the Pentagon for the six year in a row missing trillions of dollars. Yeah, we have no idea. We're, we're just like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I was, so I was explaining this to. Just keep giving us money. To keep, some cousins of mine because they sent that to me and they're like. $24 billion. They don't know where it went. Like, how is this even possible? We What's could have built on? them a Ritz for all of them to stay at, dude. <laughs> I, I forgot what it was per homeless people, per person, but it was ridiculous yeah. how much they spent. So the issue is this. If you, so I, I explained this to my cousin so that he would understand, but this is good for the audience to know. If you have a government program, let's say you work and you run a government program and you get all this funding. So you're paid a quarter million dollars a year to run this program for homeless people and you get this funding, right? $24 billion for five years. And then let's say you solve it. We fixed homelessness. You lost your job. Yeah. Yeah, that that's department it. is gone. Right. They'll be like, oh, you fixed it. There's no longer it's a need their, for you. It's not in their best interest to solve it. No, the incentive is the opposite. Yeah. The incentive is to continue to have a perpetual problem. Wow, what does that say? Yeah, so it spent an average of twelve to twenty-two thousand per household, while a single chronically homeless person can cost taxpayers as much as fifty thousand oh dollars a year. God. Yeah, that's crazy. Dude. Yeah, yeah, you can't just throw money at something with no accountability and no uh, feedback of like what's working, what's not working. Like, there's no audit. Like, what's <sighs> So, of course, like people are going to take advantage. That's just ripe well, for like corruption. They paint the problem as, as, as something that it's not. They paint the problem as it's too expensive to live here and we need more houses. That's not the problem. No. The problem is mental illness and drug abuse. Well, if that was the case, they would let like independent private people like who've tried to like solve this by building these like mo molecule homes and like yeah, no. it, they won't let that cuz it goes against the funding issues. No, the issue is you got like most the vast majority of these people are uh, drug addicted and mentally ill. So you could build and put them in all the homes you want and that's not going to solve the problem. In fact, they often trash these places and turn them into these well there's that drugs. too but really there's a whole crime syndicate involved with right this that nobody wants to talk about no uh which you know it, it's because of the the lax law and in order yeah well, I think and it's gonna get worse before it gets better you guys see the last week too that came out with all the inflation numbers did you see it no what uh, oh you didn't see uh -huh. oh i thought dude. it went down no what bro everything's up oh my God. Yes, inflation really? is back on the rise again. And this is so this is after the Fed came out earlier this year and said that they were they are planning for three rate cuts. So now they're again, again pivoting. So we're definitely not going to see a rate cut. We're either going to see a hold or actually rates go back up again. Wow. And it's because inflation didn't it's tamped down and then now it's ramping back up right now. So, I mean, which is crazy, which by the way, I know you didn't bring it up yet, but I know the you sent over the thing with the, you know, our god, this is the closest we've been to World War 3 oh, in, in do, yeah. a long time. Well, so my tinfoil hat goes, well, you know why that is because this did not go the way they had the administration did not go the way it was planned for inflation. The plan was to have three rate cuts to make and Biden would look like a champion going into his yeah. going back into re-election because oh look the economy's rebounding, yeah. inflation's down, and where rates Wars are being cut. Those buttons to and it was like oh shit, economy. That's definitely not happening now with inflation up right now. Hundred percent, there's going to be a rate hold or a rate increase, which is not going to bode well for the incumbent to stay in. Right, so of course. What's the next big driver for the economy is yeah, war. Scary, yeah. dude. So part of me is like, that's well, why. Well, it's not that's, an economy driver. That's a, that's a mistake. No, well, I, it's, a, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a... It's a distraction, and it gets people tends to get people united, right? you know, uh, because yeah. a foreign enemy or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. It's interesting. We'll see what happens. Election years always suck. Every election year sucks. It's always it's alarm, 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 alarm. One. Yeah, it's like bad news, bad news, bad news, bad news. <laughs> Dude, yeah, because I actually heard, I don't know if this is true or not, but um, like Dollar Store and Dollar General had to like, like they're going out of business because they can't provide anything for a dollar. Oh, really? I didn't know that. If they just changed their name. I know, right? Like the, the, $10 store. $10 store. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like rebrand. They've been the that for thing. a long time though. Remember when yeah. that, I mean, there used to be the 99 cent store back in the days. Yeah. It's like, you go in there and you're like, there's not anything for fucking 99 cents in here. nothing. <laughs> like, what can you even like- 
buy like a cheap piece of plastic is interesting. Is like I did not bucks. know that the dollar store was going under like I that. I thought right they now. were crushing. They were. They were crushing. They're going in and putting a lot of people yeah, look on it up because this is what was handed down to me as information. Oh. I'm, I'm going to see what's, yeah, what's going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that that's crazy. Yeah. Dude, did I tell you guys uh, uh, while Doug looks that up? Uh, my 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 kid yesterday, I, and I don't, I don't. I'm pretty aware we don't talk like this in the house, but we must because <laughs> he must pick it up this way. But uh, I was wrestling with my three year old, and you know, wrestling. I'm holding him down. And he's like trying to get up. I'm like, you can't move. I got you. You know, we're doing that kind of thing. And then he gets up and he walks away. And under his breath, he's not even saying it to me. He says it under his breath. He goes, oh, I got to do more push ups. <laughs> and then he goes in the corner. He starts doing push-ups. Yes. Oh, that's wild. I'm like, on his oh, own. Shit. Uh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh, like, oh no. Oh, we got God. a little maniac. On that's our heads. hilarious, I know, dude. Right? Oh, that's, I love it's it, so dude. funny when they say things and you're just like, when did I say that? I mean, him? he must. It's you know, we don't talk a lot about this kind of stuff in the house. He sees his mom work out in the garage. I don't even work out in the garage anymore. So. I don't know. He's totally I, I think it's Max did this thing yesterday where Katrina was like, he wanted these, uh, we have these like granola ball kind of snacks that he can yeah. have. And, they're, and it's like a healthy treat snack, right? That we allow him to have that. It's more like a treat than it is healthy. And, uh, you know, he gets to have those every once in a while. And he was, he was hungry and Katrina's like, Oh, let's, let's, uh, let's have lunch. Then he's like, he's like, no, 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 no I don't, I want that. Can I have my granola balls with that? And she's like, okay, but no more treats until you eat lunch. And he goes, okay, mommy, but you just remind me, let me know at lunchtime. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, okay, I'll, I'll let I'll you know. I'll remind you. Yeah, I'll remind you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me to remind you. Where you get that, kid? Yeah. So, oh wow. God, what a great, hold on. This The article, the headline is hilarious. Business. It is hilarious. It's hilarious. The, the title of the article, Did it you can tell that, that media <laughs> is, is just propaganda arms, right? This, yeah. look, look at the title. Dollar stores are shutting down across America. Then the second part, they did this to themselves. Okay. So what's, why, why, <laughs> yeah. why, why, why? Let me we guess. did this to ourselves. They were too greedy? Yeah. Is that what they're going to oh, say? What, yeah. is it, what does the article say, Doug, underneath? So anyway, uh, Family Dollar and Dollar Tree are closing a thousand stores. Wow. And they cite uh, inflation and shoplifting, which are tr oh, two uh, real Think about that. The misdemeanors, issues. 950 yeah. dollar store, you clean up. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, back a, you get back a truck up. <laughs> but according to this article, it's years of strategic mistakes and underinvestment. So- you know, interesting. It might be a combination thereof. I'm sure. I mean, but they want to place the Bro, blame a thousand away stores. From, that's a lot. Th that is a ton. How many locations? They 8, have? Well, Family Dollar has about eight thousand locations. Oh wow! So that's quite a few. I wonder where they're getting shut down the most. Like what parts of the country? Yeah. What would you think is most likely in big cities, or because they're in rural areas too? They're like they're yeah. in like random rural. Like I, when I go to my mom's speaking in of, Sonora. Speaking of which, did you guys know in San Francisco? I think it was that they're passing a law. That if a business is going to shut down, they have to give the city so many months advance notice. Otherwise, they'll get a fine. <laughs> fine me. I'm shutting my business down because I can't do it anymore. Yeah, and I gotta, I'm going to get fined yeah. if I don't give you a heads yeah. out. <laughs> Can you look that up, Doug? That's a real thing? I th yeah, dude. Because you know, a lot of businesses are leaving the San Francisco yeah. area. Sue my LLC. Like, like it's a bankrupt. trend or something. You know, yeah. Like, yeah, we've got to figure out how to... If you leave, I love that. If you it, leave because you can't afford to be, that here, was like the, we'll fine you. Did did that um, pass when when people left California that they could still tax them for a year after That's that? That's a good question, Justin. No, I know that was pass. that was no. Okay, okay. No. I, I was re wondering about that because I was like, <laughs> yeah, that's convenient, uh, bro. How about that? That did you you didn't watch it? That conspiracy theory video, that, or did you watch it? I did the one about that you, all the symbolism and shit. And uh, yeah, yeah, no, Hollywood I saw. I sent it over to Katrina too. Like, bro, when you other. watch it, isn't it kind of like oh. Damn. It's, you know, hard it's to, always it's hard, hard for, to not see now. I know. It's so it's what I have a hard time with too with things like that is like, okay, how much how much is this like, you know, the evil running the world and stuff like that? And how much is this like people that that are that are intentionally doing counterculture type stuff? Like Oh, because I, you know, I remember being a kid, like thinking of company ideas and you putting hidden messages in the in the title of the name. Yeah, but these like, are big celebrities. Like, like for example, did you ever see that clip of Paul McCartney? He was on a talk show and the cameras on him, and he just randomly goes boom, and he does a little triangle symbol to the camera, and then puts his hands uh, down. You ever seen that? Mm -mm. Okay, you could we could pull it up. There's a lot of stuff like that, like the triangle symbol yeah, covering this, one eye, like, uh, doing this, this like, yeah, this, like, yeah, like all that stuff. Yeah. Is, there's is, because this is like. Six six six. Yeah, it's right like there. it's like it's like symbolizing or signaling to to your your whoever your handlers are that you're 
on board. It's so it. funny now we're talking about this. This is stuff like like years ago, like 10, 15 yeah. years ago, I geeked out on, you know, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. everybody thought it was crazy. Yeah. And now it's like, oh, weird. We should have looked yeah. at this. Or all the all the emblems, all the company yeah. emblems that are like that yes. they can match up to like, oh, that's <laughs> that's crazy. That's a satanic symbol. That's a, another one. That's that yeah, one's like the, the Google Chrome where it's like all it's of a them, circle I mean, and then there's a bunch of sixes. It's it's, it's, it's if you look at it, it's three sixes in there. Yeah. There, there, there was, was a, a Nickelodeon sign. We talked about that, right? If the Nickelodeon one. I mean, Island. you should share that on the on the show because that was, you guys brought that up when we were driving somewhere recently and I had no idea yeah. what Nickelodeon, what is Nickelodeon in, what is it in Hebrew or what is it? What Latin is it? maybe? Latin, it meant, no, not Latin. It meant something, but it's not quite literal, the 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 definition. It's, it's so crazy with and, and what's coming out with you know what they're dealing with right now of all of that the shenanigans. He's like without Nickelodeon. God or Godless or something like that. Yeah. What is it? But then Snopes comes out and says no. But then you read these other articles and they're like, actually yes. Oh, what does Snopes say about it? Snopes? Says it's bullshit. It's not that they 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 did, but it, <laughs> bro, these are all media companies. They say everything's bullshit. Exactly. Yeah. These are media companies yeah. that create their own. Uh, fact checking or like department. Balenciaga, I guess that means if you break it up, it means like, uh, well, I already watched all Bath that. Is good or God or something like yeah, that. Yeah, well, that one, I mean, you remember they got caught up with I all know. kinds of child pornography and all kinds of crazy stuff, weird shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, and the that. symbolism, like the like the, the the pedophile sign or whatever, and you see that all over the place, mm -hmm. dude. What the hell? I mean, I definitely what think the there's hell? some serious nefarious stuff going on and, and bad people that are that built big companies and are wealthy. I 100 yeah. percent believe that. Then I think there's like a, a portion of people that it's just like tongue in cheek because they don't believe in God. So yeah. who cares? Let, let, let's, yeah, let's, they don't care about any of that stuff. Exactly. They're they just, think it's funny. They yeah. think it's a, you know, like, oh, let's put all kinds exactly. of devil signs yeah. in there because I don't yeah. care. You but, know, you so. know, it's funny because a lot of a lot of it is like you just just credit everything but then when you watch it after seeing a video like that and then you go back and watch it and you go wait a minute like katie perry there was a there was a part on her on how she was like a she used to sing for her church and then there was an there was an interview of, uh, of her and she said oh you know in order to make it big i had to sell my soul and then and then you hear it now and you're like wait a minute like what is going on well here? i just find it interesting like over like history how it, we're so enamored by you know the egyptians and their hieroglyphics and then uh, the aztecs and like all of this symbolism and stuff they've used in different cultures and then you keep seeing um you know all the symbols being used in different cultures as as you know modern uh advances happen but it's like that never went away we just put less emphasis on it mm -hmm. and but people still use them intentionally yeah. and it's like oh it's just that just whatever it doesn't mean anything does it not mean anything or does it just mean that you're not putting like that kind of uh filter out yeah, there anymore in terms of like dude i think that symbols have have been used intentionally f forever it's i don't know what did you what did you find there doug so nick uh, let me see if i can find this again here uh nick kelo dio people are saying it means i don't care about god yeah but then Apparently, it, if you use translate.com, it says, God bless you. Okay. So oh, it seems to be quite a bit of uh, <laughs> You're one discrepancy there. there as far yeah. as that's concerned. Yeah. <laughs> that's a big jump. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I, I think it snopes you guys every time I talk no. to you guys now. Is that the deal? No. <laughs> snopes. Yeah. I'm sure you go, you get up to those top ranks and they bring you in and they're like, I do right? feel some people get very creative with making I, these connections. What is the. Oh, I, yeah. I can there's, get, there's a name for that. We were talking about that the other day where it's like, there's, there's so, there's, the world's so big. There's so many people. There's so many variables. There's so many like random that it's like of course uh, like enough things are gonna eventually line up there's a name for that i forget what that's called yeah like I it's a, like it's a, a I, what i look at is i look at you look at this world of of these celebrities at these high levels and the the how many of them like become drug addicts or suicide or whatever it's not a great world to be in no you know and then you hear the stories of like like Corey feldman and what he talked about um you know what's happening with diddy I mean, uh, it, you know, what happened with uh, Weinstein, the producer, yeah. um, you know, I think at, at certain levels, there's these gatekeepers. Well, like, that's well, also you play why the game or you're not going to you're not going to get up to a certain level. That's why this becomes that's why it's so believable, I think. Yeah, yeah. because there is a lot of there is a lot of evil people. Yeah, period. And there is probably a lot of evil people that use symbols and do shit like that. Hundred percent. You kind of have to play their game to yeah. advance. But why? Why the covering the eye and the triangle? Why all that? Why is that so Illuminati? common? Well, that's but but it means something. Why are they all doing that? I've never seen it until it's like a gang sign, right? 
Like you're but all, they're not, that's exactly it's a, it's who was it that said that? Yeah. There was a guy I was watching. It might have been Cat Williams or someone who said, like, they're not in gangs. Why are they doing all these hand symbols and shit? You yeah. know, what's yeah. going on here? Yeah. I don't know. It's, yeah. it's ritualistic. I mean, I also think, too, because there's a lot of people that put out those conspiracy <sighs> theories online, too, that how many of those guys do that yeah. as a. Yeah, like or they see them. those pictures of them, uh, like in these photo shoots, because it's easy to, like, put together. Copy it. Yeah, and copy it. And it's yeah. just like, oh, I've seen Jay Z do this, so I'm going to do this. Yeah, you know? right. And, so yeah, and there's got to be a part of like, come on, you guys know your personalities. Like, if all of a sudden like a, a big internet rumor started about Mind Pump, and they're like, oh, they're, oh they're, I'd lean into it. I'd you would lean into it. it. <laughs> like, this is a sign. And so you would <laughs> subtly be doing that. That's gonna get screenshot. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now I'm yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I do. You got to think that there's some of that going on too. Yeah. So I mean, I where I've come with all this is that. I definitely don't discount all this bullshit. There's enough. There's uh, there's enough, uh, and I, I don't even like calling it conspiracy theory because it discredits it when you say yeah. that. Well, okay. Like, so, um, and we brought up like uh, Mark Wahlberg and I guess like uh, Mel Gibson. So I don't know if this is true or not. So oh, they're not, starting a new network. Yes. So the, okay, if that's true, I also heard that Netflix was investing like 850 million uh, in that direction for them in their new studio oh, that they're trying to really? counter. So maybe, I, yeah. again, this maybe is what I read. Concerned. I don't know if like, yeah. it was Sylvester Stallone. It was Mel Gibson and who else? Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg. And they were going to create a studio or something to promote like better values, like entertainment. With Interesting. Better values. Well, well, just to counter a lot of the initiatives, you know what you've seen like all of the content. These you days. know what I think about that? I think that they see the market shifting because I do, you feel can make like, a lot of money in that direction yeah, now if yeah. you if you put together a really good. Well, the great Daily, driver, Daily You've Wire is an example of that. Yeah, yeah. Daily Wire is 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 making a ton of money. There just, just needs based to be more competition, really. You know? Good. Yeah, I, I know it is good. It is good. I think it is good to do. At, w at one point, does that uh, does it? God, it's gonna be so. There's so many um, competing services, and like it's it's interesting to see all this all kind of panning totally. out. Totally. Yeah. It's it's wild. We, it's interesting. Wild times. Yeah. Dude. We have right. a shout out. Um, John Deloney, we're shouting Don, John Deloney out. Go yeah. if you guys aren't if you guys aren't following his uh, his podcast and his show. I mean, you want to grow as a person, uh, and you, I mean, he it's incredible the the stuff he talks about and the people he talks to and the the, the way he answers questions and works with people. It is it is captivating. Yeah, it's incredible. If you've used CBD products in the past and don't feel anything, it's because you haven't tried Ned. This is full spectrum hemp oil extracts, high in CBD but has also other cannabinoids. They all work together. Look, this is the only one I've ever felt. Like I've tried CBD before. I don't feel it. I take Ned, 45 minutes later, I can totally feel it. Try it for yourself. See what I'm talking about. Go check them out. Go to helloned.com. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump, get 15% off. All right, back to the show. First question is from Tom Heiser. As a 48-year-old male, I'm having a hard time with increasing the overhead press. What would you recommend as a Z-press progression? So going from Z-press to a new exercise is the question is what I'm asking. Um, I think, I mean, a standing shoulder press, you should, if you could do a Z-press seated, you could do a standing shoulder press, but I would go one arm light and I would pause at the top and really focus on maintaining core stability at the top. I, I, I'm not quite sure what the question is asking. I think if the, if the I, question is like, what do I do next? Then I, I mean, you yeah, should I be think, able to do a standing press. I think they're trying to get stronger and increase weight and they're having a hard time probably breaking through a plateau. Am I reading that? I think that's what I'm reading yeah, into this. That's kind of what I was I, reading. I have, I have something for that. And it's actually funny that, that, that I didn't read. I didn't know you guys brought this question. This is kind of a cool, um, I remember when uh, I did this with Justin and I had never trained this way before. And he got me into the heavy push standing push press. Mm -hmm. I never trained that. That was like not in my art. That was like not in my repertoire at all. Like that was like not a bodybuilder move. There was no reason for me to do just to, to, to use body English to get as yeah. much weight up over my head. Mm -hmm. But what I found was one being able to use some, some leg drive to push a weight that I couldn't strict press over my head. And then after I would do that, I would stabilize that weight over my head and just lifting a weight I've never lifted, shoulder pressed, seated, seated or strict pressed over my head, got oh. me comfortable with moving that weight. It now, it, my Z press went up, my overhead press, everything else went up yeah. from that. 
Um, I got Your a lot of ability to muscle recruit uh, enhances substantially whenever you move weight with acceleration and you get that fast twitch response. So yeah, that's I was super bummed that sense. I did not apply that earlier in my lifting. Now career. the only issue with the push press is you need to have good skill. Hey, to well, do yeah. That. yeah. Oh, I'm, a, a I'm assuming it's this is, this is somebody who's a, a, a little more advanced and is trying yeah. to because if you're if you've already done Z press. And you've already done overhead press. You're 48 years old, and you're hitting a, a, a plateau. I'm I'm assuming this is if that's so, the case, then yeah. Well, because right. yeah, I mean, if you're looking at it from a stability perspective, like adding elements of rotation in there is going to help kind of fill some gaps. Like because a lot of times the issue is you there's either a lateral lateral instability or there's a um, you know a, a transverse instability, a, a rotational instability, and so if you are addressing that with load. Uh, you know, you could you could increase the amount you could carry overhead with control. Uh, so to be able to kind of add in more Arnold press, for instance, or, you know, what I like to do is like one arm and just focused out with a kettlebell. So I have it loaded on the backside of my arm and I can go through that natural spiraling press uh, with that. And then two, like a, just a hold with, you could do this with a bottoms up kettlebell where I'm just holding it for stability because lateral forces are going to pull it one side or the other. And to be able to really control that uh, and get strength with that lateral stability, that's going to help a lot. Yeah. The, the two things that really uh, bump my overhead press the most uh, besides the traditional, like, you know, practice the exercise, that kind of stuff were overhead carries. So I would hold a weight over my head, pack my shoulder, drop my shoulder, you know, maintain good stability in my core and then hold it or walk with it. I like walking with it because the movement yeah. makes me have to stabilize the weight. And so I would go one arm yep. in one direction, the other arm in the other direction, or, uh, and holding a dumbbell or especially a kettlebell in the rack, rack position yes. where I'm actually supporting, I'm not just resting, I'm supporting it in this position and then walking. That bottom hold and that top hold huge increases in my overhead press from that isometric hold. And it doesn't hammer the body that much. So you can actually add it to your workout and you probably won't overtrain unless you're already tipping over into overtraining. It's not going to add too much damage uh, to the body. So like a couple sets of that. In fact, I like to do them before I would do my shoulder press. Uh -huh. And it, it made a big it's difference. A good primer to do that. Totally. Next question is from what Mallory eats. Is 30 grams of protein powder the same as 30 grams of animal source protein? What are the differences in terms of how much we absorb? Uh, if they come from the same source, theoretically, it should be the same. Now, you know, there's a big difference, though. You know, the question is, are they the same? Uh, no. no, obviously. No. Like, like when you eat meat, you're chewing on it. Your, your body's processing it differently. There are other nutrients involved. So it's not exactly the same. But if the question is, will I be utilizing all 30 grams of protein from a powder? Well, yeah, if there's 30 grams of protein in there, so long as you can digest it okay and there's no digestive issues there, then you'll absorb it uh, just fine. But you know, eating food and taking a powder is not the same thing. Even if it's the same amount of protein, there's a you know eating component, chewing component, digestive component, um, and, and it's just different. And whole foods is where you should always go first. That's always the place that you want to prioritize. And in my experience, consistently, people, if they can do it through whole natural foods, they just get better results across I, the board. I also want to highlight how arrogant we are in science too. Like, that's what we know. There's still, there, there's so much unknown about the gut still. It's like, it's like trying to like speculate about the fucking universe yeah, sometimes. Yeah. And yes, we, we, we've come a long way. So we have a very good understanding of macro and micronutrients, but we, we're, we're assuming we know all the values of eating whole foods, what, not just from a, 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 a measuring micro and macronutrients, but what's going on in, inside the whole digestive process and inside your gut and how your yeah. gut is responding to those whole foods versus this processed powder. And, and there's, there's enough unknowns there that I hate when we, oh yeah, you know, the, the science guy will be like, yes, you utilize the same amount of grams of protein, therefore it's the same thing. It's like, nah, that's what we know so far. I mean, and if it was like, my client was asking me that because they are just focusing on hitting their protein intake and they're like, Adam, you know, is 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 this 30 grams of protein uh, not useful to me because you say that eating whole foods is so, well, no, it's very useful to you yeah. and it's better than you skipping the meal whatsoever. But I'm always going to push my client 
towards whole foods for the little bit that we for sure know. And then even for the unknown that we don't know, it seems that we were supposed to eat whole foods. Well, <laughs> we know this for like, here's something that's related. Okay. If you always blend your kid's food, Okay, you always give them baby food all the time. And let's say you keep doing this all the way up until, you know, they start to grow up. Their face and jaw and teeth will develop differently yep. because they're not masticating on something. They're not chewing on something. So your jaw actually gets smaller. Teeth get crowded. You can get crooked teeth and it changes your facial structure from not chewing on something. So just that alone. So in other words, I could take a steak and I could blend a steak. I'm not even making a protein powder. I'm just going to blend a steak and drink it. Is that different? It is. Yeah. It also changes the digestive process. Now, I've exactly. broken it down so much that the surface area to, to volume has changed so much that the digestive process changes as well. So all these things have an impact. Well, there's these chemical signals and everything as you're chewing something as That's well, right. too. So if you bypass that process, it's like, yeah, you don't know how you know optimal it's going to be at that point, uh, just like swallowing it down and trying to absorb it in your gut versus like breaking it down first. Yeah. And, and I, mean, I, and I hate again, as like we try and do is like, we extract it, it, it like, yeah, like it's like, it, it like we are in a lab all the time and like, well, you know, we've put, we've fortified everything in this protein powder that you would get in that steak. Therefore it should be a, an equal match. It's like, no, there's other parts of this that are that, that of your you know, body at, at the very least, Adam, to your point at the very, very least, we completely discredit the, the experience of eating food versus drinking something, a shake, and we discredit that as if it means nothing, as if food is only what's inside the food and the eating of it and the chewing of it and the digesting of it and the, you know, the, the, the whole process of it, it, there's no other potential impacts or values or, or whatever. It's like, oh, if we could just give you the same exact nutrients, yeah, it'll be the exact same right? experience. I mean, right. it's the same. It's exercise. Yeah. You're, you're bypassing that process, your jaw and your your muscles to your earlier point. Yeah. Like you're, if you're not e expressing that, where, when else are you going to do that throughout yeah. the day? Yeah. yeah. Next question is from D Prior Thirty. How does the body actually lose or burn fat? Do you sweat it out, breathe it out, or is it something else? Yeah, it's interesting. Sweat and pee, yeah. yeah no, you, uh, you breathe out a lot of the fat. <laughs> does a lot of it get breathed out? Is that yeah. why they have those, uh, uh, they capture the body gym? Yeah, 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 yeah. You actually breathe out a lot of them. Some of it will come out in your urine, uh, but you, you utilize it. You utilize it as energy, and some of it gets uh, comes out through your breath. Some of it comes out through urine and, and poop. But most of it, a lot of it gets used uh, as fuel, as, as energy, yeah. as fuel. So it's not like it just disappears. You know, when you start to like physics explains how energy doesn't get, it doesn't just disappear and it doesn't just get created. Uh, by the way, this is one of the challenges with like the Big Bang. Like, oh, cool. We just got everything out of nothing. Well, uh -huh. that, that, that doesn't make sense either. Got to figure that out. So energy transfers. So if you have fat stored on your body and then you lose fat, it doesn't like disappear. It turns into something else. Converts, and in this case, yeah. your body uses it for energy. So it actually takes it and converts it into a usable form of energy. And then you use that energy as you move. And then as you burn that energy, it gets excreted through feces, pee, and breath. I don't know what the percentage is of yeah. you know, where it comes out, but I know breath is a great way to calculate. I, didn't, I, didn't, yeah, I, I know. heard I should, that, but I didn't know. I should have known something. that because we used to have those machines yeah. to test your metabolism, uh, metabolism yes. test through yeah. your breathing. So yeah. that makes total sense. I it's don't interesting, know. right? Yeah. Yeah. It like is how accurate is that too? I always wondered how accurate those things are. You know, as accurate know. as they get them, they're accurate while you're using them, but because things adjust uh, on the fly oh, with yeah, your body. Your metabolism changes. Yeah. Like so thing. I'd love to see what that says right there, Doug, that you're pulling up there. Yeah. 84% of the fat that is lost turns into carbon dioxide and leaves the body through oh, the 84%. lungs. 84%? Through the lungs. What? And the ratings, the remaining sixteen percent becomes water. Oh, wow. that's, that's after it's converted, right, and used as energy. Sure. And so the sixteen percent basically is divided between the the pee and sweat, right? Is that how that? I believe how? so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Really, really interesting. Now that doesn't mean so people watching this, like, oh, cool, I'm going to go sweat. Yeah. yeah. Or I'm going to go pee a lot, or whatever. Yeah. Or I'm going to go drink more well, water. Well, to flush you, the you, fat have to, out. you have to explain also, Sal, that like the, that's not the primary source the body wants to use for energy. 
if you have glycogen, if your body has got a, if you've got a bunch of carbohydrates that you just consumed, that's the primary source it wants yeah. to use. That's what they're first. Which is why the why of course like you go and, and like our good friend Lane is always you know hammering this to people of like why it's so why all these diets all these things why they work is because they're low calorie you know once you once you get to a place where you're so low calorie and you don't have that glu stored glucose you don't have that glucose for the body to tap into and then use as fuel the next place it will go body is fat body fat yeah your body doesn't go into body fat unless it has to yes. if it's got energy coming in it's not gonna you're not gonna go into your savings account right if you have money in your That's wallet. It. If you got money in your wallet and you're buying something, that's what you're going to use. When you run out of money, I got to go to the savings account. Same thing with the body. It's crazy how many people don't understand this that do exercise, like cardio, for example, as their primary source to burn. And they go and they go, they, they, you know, maybe they clean up the diet a little bit, but they still over consume calories and then they, they run and they can't figure out why the hell they're not seeing any results. Yeah. It's like, well, you're still eating enough calories to sustain yeah. Yeah. this exercise. And Cause a lot of times your, your the exercise. exercise will kick the appetite up. Right. So you get somebody who like has kind of a slower metabolism. Or, what or the other part is, uh, you know, your body again, it's like a, imagine a person managing their budget. If you start spending so much money that your savings account starts to get depleted, well, then what you do is you figure out how to spend less money, right? Your body then starts to figure out how to burn less calories. This is why strength training is so important because strength training sends a opposite and opposing signal that says, don't slow down metabolism. We need muscle. We need, In fact, we need to build muscle. And of course, you have to fuel it with the adequate calories and adequate protein to make that happen. Otherwise, what ends up happening is like what Adam was talking about with the with the trisepatide, right? You just end up losing weight and then your body's like, oh, adjust the metabolism. Let's burn, let's, I don't want to say burn, let's pair muscle down so that we can slow the metabolism down so we can start to meet these caloric, this caloric intake. So now your body learns how to burn 1,500 calories a day. Oh. Next question is from Dirty Dan. I made tremendous strength gains through anabolic. I put on 50 pounds on my squat, 130 pounds on my deadlift. Wow. I've done this without straps or a belt. At what point should someone start using wrist straps or a weight belt? Never. Never. No. Yeah, there's no need. You don't need it. Unless, <laughs> I mean, you can if you if you want. I mean, a weight belt will add weight to your bar, but then you're using the weight. The, the belt will make you stronger. Yeah, but you know what? Someone like this, like... If you've you've trained without it and you keep continue to do this, I would never want you to. No, I would never. Like it's it's a it's a more difficult question to answer to somebody who is has already had has already yeah. used it and utilized it for so long, yeah. and it's like, man, I'm so much weaker if I don't use it, yeah. and then I feel like my yeah. back isn't getting the same workout, and my legs are. So then it's like, okay, like okay, maybe try and just do it for your top sets, and yeah. then let's only do it when it's you a do gradual sort of weaning off. Yeah, but happening. man, if I got a client who has it's seen increase in their squat and their deadlift and they haven't they're not using any tools or band-aids that's ideal i'm like let's keep going yeah there's no the and the 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 benefit of strap it up and getting an extra 20 pounds or 50 pounds to one of those movements it does not outweigh the benefits of you staying real world strong of being able to grip and grab and yeah. hold on to and support that weight on your what's back without any tools and what's interesting is that the thought process is uh with weight belts is it protects my back so that I don't hurt myself. Right. That's actually not true. No. It allows you to lift more weight. So if you try to lift that weight without the belt, you'll hurt yourself. But the reality is if you've never used the weight belt and then you start using a weight belt, you actually increase your risk of injury without the weight belt because of the right. change in recruitment patterns where you start to become more reliant on it. So you're better off not using it. Now, if you're, you're a power you're lifter- You're replacing, you're stabilizing uh, your, your entire system like built- for stabilizing you. So That's now, right. now you're adding more load that your body wouldn't naturally do on its own, right. which then exposes any other little yes. imbalance and discrepancy you have in any other part of your body. Yeah. Not now, unless you're a power lifter and you're going to compete with a belt, in which case then you would need to use a belt because you have to actually practice using one. Or if you're a strongman competitor where they allow them to use wrist straps, then use it so that you know how to use them. Otherwise, I mean, and the same thing with wrist straps, Justin, like you start using wrist straps and now you're lifting more weight than your hands can normally handle, which means you're stressing all the other parts of your body more. Yes. And you, you're you more likely to potentially lift a weight. You're going to overreach. Right, because uh, what a great limiter. Think of that, right? Yeah. You're going to go deadlift really heavy. It's a natural limiter. And your hands can't lift the weight. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, but my back can lift more. So let me put this. <laughs> Maybe your back can't. 
Yeah. Maybe maybe adding more weights that your hands can't handle just increase your risk of a back injury. Yeah, yeah. Whereas normally what would happen is just drop the bar, yeah. which is not that big of a deal. And I mean, if you're in a competition, you sacrifice things to yes. lift the ultimate yes. amount of weight, you know, yeah. regardless of what I, kind of pressure is putting on your joints. I used both for, for a long time because back in the in the 90s and early 2000s, like this bodybuilders all used them. So I was like, oh, I'll use them too. It took me about a year and a half to get off wrist straps to get my grip strong enough to handle the weight that I can handle before. I never fully got off of using a belt. I still use a belt with heavy deadlifts and heavy squats. It's a complete ego thing. 100%. It's probably ladies, psychologically listen, embedded too. It is all ego. I know this. So I'm, I communicate differently than the way I train because I'm a better trainer to other people than to myself. But when I deadlift heavy or squat heavy, I still wear a belt and it's all 100% ego. If I were training myself like a, like a, and doing a good job, I would just back off. I would yeah. just back off and not do those. I mean, that's what I meant by yeah. like, it's so much, that this is a harder question for me if I have someone like you. If you yeah. were my client and I'm like, man, your whole life you've trained yeah. this way and I've got to like, I'm going to tell you, hey Sal, we're not going to squat over 300 now yeah. because of you, you're not, you know what I'm saying? Like that's tough to take someone and reverse them out. But if you were my client and you've never done it, you're like, hey, I'm doing like, hell no. Like yeah. why? Like why would you even do that? There's no reason for you to, I wish I knew that uh, earlier too. Like the the risk versus reward also. It's like the the extra 25, 50 pounds that you're going to add to these lifts, like the, the amount of gains that you're going to get in for what you're going to lose out on as far as core your core strength and, and protecting the low back and things like that. It's just like, and then also good grip strength. It's like, those things are far more valuable. And so like, I would never, I would never trade that off knowing what I know now had I understood that when I was younger lifting. Totally. Look, earlier we talked about uh, peptides. We have a peptide guide that breaks down the most popular peptides, explains how they work, what they do, who they're for, who they're not for. It's a free guide, totally free. We had our partners at mphormones.com create it for us. You can find this at mindpumpfree.com. It's a free peptide guide. You can also find us on social media. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin on Instagram. I'm at Mind Pump Media on Instagram. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 